Welcome to Alive in the Word with me, Melissa Garrison. I'm pastor at Safe Haven Bible Center in Fairfield. And last week we talked about you're tougher than you think you are. But the title this today is, and God's even tougher than you. In Romans 8, 28, in the contemporary Bible, it says this, God is always at work for the good of everyone who loves him. You remember the weebles that wobble, but they don't fall down? Or those rock 'em sock 'em balloons, you could just smack them, and I mean, they're down and pop back up again? Well, we were created with bounce back in our spirit. And, and as I was thinking about life, you know, it comes at us swinging, I mean, blows one after the other sometimes, and we think, where'd all this come from? You know, when is it gonna stop? The enemy doesn't care if you're sick, if you're depressed, if you're down, if you're having a good day. He has no mercy on anybody, and he will come after us. Remember Joseph in the Bible? This guy was a poster boy for bad things happening to somebody. He was betrayed, jealousy, character assassination, lies, you name it. He went through it, but he had that bounce back, and he knew he did. And, and he just kept going and going, and God made him even strong enough to stand before Pharaoh. Now, I want you to get this picture. Pharaoh, the most powerful man in the kingdom, and poor old Joseph, who was powerless, it kind of reminded me of David down here and Goliath up here. But you see, when God's involved in it, the whole table switches. And now he who was powerless is powerful, and he who was powerful has been brought down. And that's what he was walking into. In Genesis 41, 32, it says this, And the dream was repeated to Pharaoh twice because the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. Wow, I need that on my refrigerator, I think, to remind me when I can't see God's hand moving and I don't know exactly where God is, I know he's still working. I can be assured of that because the word of God tells me that. Jo to Joseph, God was alive and active and a very big part of his life every day. When things happen and uh, the, the dream is, has, been, has been revealed and now Pharaoh knows there's a whole lot coming that's not good. So he looks around and he says this, Can we find someone in whom is the Spirit of God? He recognized it was God's hand on Joseph. He recognized that. And the answer was, well, nobody but Joseph. And in a heartbeat, Joseph's life changed forever. He was put in charge of the kingdom. Everything that had turned against him was suddenly turned the other direction. Remember this. When you're walking through a hard time, you may feel like Joseph in the prison, not in the palace. The palace took a long time to get there. And when it did, it was marvelous. It's not painless, it's not easy, but God is working behind the scenes every day. Maybe you're in a spot right now and you're thinking, there is no earthly good that can come through, come out of what I'm going through. If you believe that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, if he did it for Joseph, won't he do it for you? The Bible says he's no respecter of persons. The devil might have meant this situation to destroy you, but I'm here to tell you, God will use it for his glory, and you will come out stronger than ever. When I'm walking through life now, it's easy for me to turn around and go, well, that's what God was doing. He brought good here and here and here, and I never saw what he was doing. I think we, we're all that way to some extent, but I think we need to say, God, show me as I walk through it. Show me your hand. Show me you're still with me. Show me that, that I can see you in little things that are happening as I'm walking through. I just read the coolest story in a Max Licato book, and it just kind of jumped at me. It was about a young man named Sam. Sam, was, Sam loved the Lord. He was deployed to Afghanistan, and there was a terrible explosion when he got there. And Sam says all he remembers is falling out of the truck and getting dirt to try to put his face out that was on fire and his body. And 
he dropped to his knees and he called out to Jesus and he said, just take me home. He expected to die that day. But God had a different plan. Oh, if we could just get that in our spirit. God has a different plan sometimes. And it's so much better. But for Sam, at this moment in time, all he saw ahead of him was pain. And it was terrible, terrible pain. For three years, he was in all kinds of therapy. They were excising the, the, the burned skin. Grafts came about. But in the middle of all that pain, there was this beautiful young girl named Amy that walked in the door. And he thought she was gorgeous, but what really impressed him is she didn't flinch when she looked at him. You know, he ended up asking her out. They went to a rodeo. They fell madly in love. And Amy didn't know the Lord, but through Sam, she found Christ, they got married, have a child. Do you see what just happened here? Over here we've got war, possible death, we've got pain, and over here we've got a soul that was brought into the kingdom of Jesus Christ. We've got a family that has been established to go down generation after generation. God's plans are so much better. What we short term on is what we're going through, not where God's taking us. And God's saying, I got a better picture and a better plan. You and I are prone to say, God's good. God's good all the time, all the time. God's good, oh yeah. But do we really believe that? I mean, gut level, believe that? I'd have said absolutely, till I read some questions that, that Max had written in a book. Listen to these questions, and it really will make you think. When the cancer is in remission, we say, God is good. But what about when the remission is no longer there, and we're facing death, face to face, eye to eye, is God still good? What about when the pay raise comes in? We say, God's good. My job is great. But what about when there's no job, no paycheck, and no hope. Is your God still good? What about when a marriage is saved from divorce? We say, God's good, God's good. But what if that marriage isn't saved and the spouse walks out the door and falls in love with somebody else? Is your God still good? See, we gotta make our minds up on this because without that, we're going by what we feel and hear and see. And God is a good, good father. Do you believe that he's as good in the cemetery as he is in the nursery? Do you believe he's as good in the unemployment line as he is in the grocery line? Do you believe he's, he's as good in, in the recession as he is in prosperity? We need to ask ourselves some tough questions. Have you ever tried to bargain with God? Oh, I might have been known to do that on occasion. It goes something like this. God, I'll do whatever you want me to do. I'll go to church every Sunday. I'll get a Sunday school pen for perfect attendance. I'll tell people about you if. And it's if you heal my child, if you save my marriage, if you bring my husband into the kingdom. We're trying to bargain that out. And God's saying, I don't work that way. We want what we want when we want it. And if God doesn't perform accordingly, we don't like that at all. You know, in Job 34.10, it says this, Listen to me, all you can, who, who can understand. God can never do wrong, never do evil. He can never do wrong. It is impossible for the Almighty God to do evil. Everything that God does for us, everything that he does in, in our lives or doesn't do in our lives flows through love. All of it flows through love. He is love. The Bible doesn't say he loves. It says he is love. That means everything about him is love. He emanates it. And so when he does that, he can't make a decision without it flowing through that love. We don't always like it because we don't like the way it looks. In James 1.17, it says every good action, every perfect gift is from God. But these good gifts come down from the creator of the moon, 
stars and sun, who does not change like shifting shadows. God may permit the enemy to come into our life, but he will never permit him to be victorious over you. Romans 8.28 in the NIV says, And we know, in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who've been called according to his purpose. I was reminded of Johnny Erickson Tata. I admire that woman greatly. She's been over 40 years in a wheelchair. She had a diving accident as a young girl. Satan had a plan for her to destroy her, to destroy her faith, to destroy her witness. God had a bigger plan. Did God take her out of that wheelchair, bring her health back? That's not the plan God had. But if you see her today, international speaker, radio host, speaking all over the world for Jesus Christ, that woman has had tremendous impact. You and I were created to have tremendous impact. Would she have had as great a ministry if she had her health? Her, her body, her legs operating correctly? I don't know, but I think God did. Right now, I'm going to pray, and I'd like you to join me in this prayer. I think we need to pray that we see the goodness of God and that we see that we have a good, good Father when it's good and when it's not according to what we see, feel, and, and hear. Father, right now, God, as you just sweep through that room where these people are that are watching, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you minister to them in a powerful way. God, I pray that whatever they're walking through, they will see you and they will know that even if it doesn't look the way they want it to, you have a plan. You have a purpose. Oh, God, help us to see that. And help us to believe beyond a shadow of a doubt, you are a good, good Father. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to join us next week. And if you know of somebody that needs help in this area, let them see the video. You might just change a life. See you next week.